Hello and welcome back to the Red and White podcast. Join here with Azza to talk about the appointment of Lee Johnson. Uh, getting straight into it, first and foremost, are you happy with the appointment? I think we've, I think we've got to be. We've got to look at where we are. Uh, we are a League One team. I know ideally I would have liked Nigel Pearson and Kevin Phillips or Roy Keane, Eddie Howe, but we do have to have a bit of a reality check and kind of say, is it the worst appointment in the world? Absolutely not. Um, I wasn't happy with Partington at first. He kind of turned it around in the end and then dropped off again. But I think looking at where the club's going and they've probably took on board that fans want an attacking team. And from what I've read and heard, he's an attacking manager. Um, we kind of we, we can't be too fussy. There's no point getting his back from the start. I think a lot. I think a lot of people are happy with it. Just need to get behind him. I think the players need to buy into his philosophy. And as a club, we need to have, a, have our own philosophy. I don't think we've had that in a few years, or at least a good one, if that. Yeah, um, I mean, you mentioned a few names there, Pearson, Phillips, Roy Keane. I mean, Pearson, fair enough, but the second two are probably names who I wouldn't have wanted to get in. For me, Lee Johnson would have probably been my third or fourth choice just behind the, the Cowleys or, or Paul Cook. Um, he's, he's got a, we were just speaking there about his record. I mean, he, he did a really, really decent job at Oldham. Then he went to Barnsley. He was a little bit hit and miss, but towards the end of his time at Barnsley, he had offers coming out of his ears, so maybe he did do a better job than his, his uh, record on paper gives him credit for. He then went to Bristol City, spent a number of years there, took them from what from, like, from what I can see as a, a very average championship side or a team that was challenging promotion for uh, every year. Um, like, what what does that say about him? What does his accolades like, say about him? Like, does, that, does that give you hope? Because a part of me thinks, well, Phil Parkinson had been promoted three times out of League One, and obviously we've, we've had to sack him. Are, are you confident about about um, about Johnson's record? I think we've got to think about it with Barnsley. Is Barnsley haven't always been the team, uh, a championship team that we are now, uh, like the wall like last season. Um, they've always had our number, but I think when he first took over, it wouldn't have been fan, like fantastic funds or. It wouldn't have really been his team. I don't think he was there that long, if I if I recall. No, it was about a year, I think. It was only a year. Um, I think you're right. But when I think I remember when he took over Bristol City, they were in relegation zone, and it wasn't until the last year where they kept they, he kept them up. And then after that, it was it was literally right side of the table in the championship. And for a team like Bristol City, which is no disrespect because they're flying much higher than what we are, um, as everyone they is. are. They, they were like where they are now. They are a very well established team who I think everyone kind of want them to get promoted to the to the to the prem. I know I, I'm a big fan of them. Uh, I know I'm a big fan of a lot of the players that have come through, which I think we'll get on to and talk about. But that, that stemmed from him. Without Johnson there, I would hate to see where Bristol City would have would have been. I'm sure Bristol City fans owe him a lot of owe him a lot just for the simple fact of keeping them up. Because that money in the championship and the TV rights and everything like that will have and sponsorship will have helped him them where they are now. And to get the Premier League uh, this season, it's got to, uh, the foundations were set because of Lee Johnson. So, yeah, on paper, football's not played on paper at the end of the day. Uh, I mean, let's look at it like Alex Ferguson's record at Man United and start off wasn't great until you know he, he, got, he started getting it right. The team bought into his philosophy, and then he was like 25 years in, in the best job in the world. So. Like you say, Parkinson looked great on paper, but maybe the wrong fit for us at the time. Yeah, I, I think you nailed it then. And I think we're really going in, in a new direction. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely want to speak about um, the sporting director, I believe his role is, uh, speaking who came from Birmingham City. Um, I, I, I mean, to me, I didn't really know much about him uh, initially, but I've had, I've had a look. And, and when you look at, uh, he was the academy director, I believe, of Birmingham. You, you look at some yeah. of the players who have came through there in the recent years. Jude Bellingham's the first one that springs to mind. Damari uh, Gray. Gray, another one. And there has been a few players who's come through Birmingham's academy. So clearly he knows his stuff. Um, and to me, I think at the moment, we don't, we, don't just, we don't just need like a manager um, who's a quick fix to win us a few games. I, I genuinely think, especially if this takeover is going to go through, we need someone who's going to implement a, a new philosophy about the club and take us in a new direction. Do you think with the way that we've appointed um, Lee Johnson, who has done so well at Bristol City and didn't just improve them, but actually move them forward as a club, as a head coach, and then bringing in the director of football as well, that we're going to head, head in a different direction? Absolutely. Uh, we've got to, I think, I also think with the owners, uh, we probably, Stuart Donald and Charlie Meffin have had a lot of st- uh, stick with and some of it rightly so, but I think some of it has just stemmed from years of frustration of owners, uh, well, owner, sorry, shall we say. 
Uh, Charlie Meffin strikes me the wrong way. Um, I met him down at Wembley, he seemed nice, but he was still a bit of an arrogant uh, person, shall I say. Donald seemed absolutely like a genuine bloke, but I think he was trying to be a quick fix. The owners who come in now need to know it's not a quick fix. And I think they kind of thought, well, Sunderland will get, will get promoted and then they'll be happy in the championship. And maybe they would have sold them for a quick book or maybe they would have you know, put a bit of money in, got a bit of money for TV rights and getting promoted. I think now everyone has kind of put the cards on the table and said, right, we're in League One. We need to get out of League One and we need to do something from now for when we get to the Premier League or if we get to the Premier League in five, ten years' time, whatever it may be, we're doing the same thing. Obviously, I thought it's not going to be 10 years' time or even five years. I hope it's three years, two years, quick, quick as we can. But I think we need to look at someone like a Bournemouth or Eddie Howe where he took them from League One and stayed that style. Even the opposite way of Sean Dyche when he took over Burnley, he's implemented that style and he's kept it the same throughout. Uh, Wolves, I mean, they were helped with Batman, but the five at the back, Sheffield United, five. I know we're not going to play five at the back, but you know, it's, it's a different team, it's different players. Even if Sean Dyche played a 4 4 2, even if we played a 4 4 2, that might be our ticket to. To the glory. I mean, our best years have been playing 4 4 2 with Quinn and Phillips up front. So who knows? Maybe that's, I think that's a, a Sunderland formation. I hate to say it, but you have the two midfielders who are going to work hard with the two wingers who can do both. And then you have the two strikers who need to be working together. And I think that is like a Sunderland formation. I can't remember the last time we actually had a philosophy at Sunderland, besides the one where it was Defant and he was just bringing anyone, anyone he could find who, you know, he's mates with. So, yeah, it was I an like absolute think... uh, disaster under under uh, Defanti, wasn't Defanti. it? Was, was is he the one who brought in the likes of like Moberg, Carlson, and Cabral <laughs> and all of them? They just didn't uh, play it. Cabral, I thought he had a fantastic debut against Fulham. The next thing I know, he was gone. So, God knows what I know. Roberge, and I think it was Chaluska right back when he had bars he sent in the stands. So, I, yeah, yeah, I think you nailed it as well with um with, with, with what you said about about Stuart Donald and, and Methvin. I think they came in saw an opportunity. Um, it was a quick turnaround in a year. A, a lot of which what they did got the fans on board, got more fans on the ground. We became financially more sustainable. I think they had this vision of turning the club around, giving it a lick of pain, so to speak. And then someone can come in, and there's a really great foundation there. And that was their that was their ticket to retirement. I, personally, I think uh, that was their opinion. I, I had a Andy Camus on here who was on the Netflix series, and he defended Stuart Donald quite well. And he had, he had a lot of good things to say about him as a man, as opposed to a, a chairman and owner. Uh, moving away from that ever so slightly, one thing I think, I didn't want to be negative, but I think one thing we've, we've got to touch on is 10 to 20 games time, things don't get off the ground. We're still struggling to score goals. Maybe we're conceding even more. But overall, we, aren't, we, we haven't moved forward as a football club and promotion isn't looking like it's an option. Where, where do we go from there? <laughs> that, that is the million dollar question really I, I hate to think of it but this is something at the end of the day so that anything could happen it's not going to be the same of it's, it, it won't be the same as this we probably will not get I think this is our last chance of getting a decent manager in I, I thought it was the same when we got rid of Grayson I thought I don't know who we're going to get here and Chris Coleman at the time was a very popular, popular appointed uh, appointment he was well known he was renowned for what he did with wheels and I think everyone was like oh we've done this I know we had the likes of of uh, Dick and Sam Allardyce who were big big managers at the time and every time we've always sacked someone you've always looked at them and oh well Martin O'Neill's there we'll, we'll have him Mark Hughes is there not that I really want Mark Hughes at any any point of this club we've always been that big name manager even David Moyes at the time everyone was quite happy with David Moyes from what I've seen you know I don't I hate to go back to that but he was it was what he did with Everton I think everyone looked and went right he can do that with us Martin O'Neill, Aston Villa, he can do that with us. So it's kind of the repeat. The only one I can think really actually paid off was Big Sam. Unfortunately, things turned out the way they did. So I'm hoping that Johnson can do the same. Actually, this time, about the seventh time we've said this, as a manager can do something. But I hope he can actually get us into the promotion. If we get in playoffs, is that going to be acceptable? If we get, if we, if we win it, yes. No one would care. No one would really bother if we got the uh, playoffs. I think everyone would just be more concerned we got promoted. I'd take second. No. Couldn't get off first. Give me second. Couldn't yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would snap anyone's hand off at second, yeah. Someone off me second at the start of the season, I'd absolutely take it. Yeah. I mean, I, it, I, I would. Yeah, to me, it, it's more important that we just get out of this league and get back to the Championship because the longer we're in this league, the longer we're going to have to have a League One budget and, and, and get a League One income playing against League One teams. 
the sooner, sooner we'll get back into the championship, we'll just get that little bit closer. We, we just get another set up the ladder. And, and for me, that's that's when you have to start look, looking at, yeah. right, we need to get back up into the Premier League now. Um, just as, as one of the, the last questions, uh, we were just mentioning there about some of your signings. I mean, the, some of the names that uh, you rattled off there, uh, Browning, Moisa, uh, Adam Webster, he seems to have a, a real great eye for signings. Um, but do you not think that maybe that it could be a mistake to then appoint him as a head coach as opposed to a manager and then bring in a director of football to do the signings for him? Um, I think on the report, there was a, I read something about uh, a Barnsley podcaster or uh, someone who does something, uh, Bristol City, sorry. And they said that they think Lee Johnson took the rap for the director of football there who brought in a few players who wasn't... And I did look at the recent signings from 1920 and some of the signings weren't great. But you look at some of the ones that he probably did have a, a hand in signing... And I look at more like Tammy Abraham, who came in and he went back for a second stint, I, I believe. Uh, he Basically, look where he has, he's at now. The likes of, I'm, I've got a list here, Adam Webster, who's playing Premier League football, Josh, Brian, uh, Josh Brownhill, he's playing Premier League football. He signed Bailey Wright. Eventually, he did kind of, I think he was the one who might have got rid of him. I'm not too sure. Yeah, he was. He was. But, he was. but I think he was having injury problems as well. Yeah, I think his contract was running up as well. I mean... But if you go into a club and you say somebody that you know who might know your philosophy, you're not going to go, ah, see you later. Like you, you are going to probably go, right, he can help me here. He's not going to get rid of him. He knows he's too important. He's way too good for, late, for late, League One. Uh, he's not going to go in. I think people are saying people are going, he's going to get rid of Bailey Wright again. Why? He's, he's, he's not stupid. He may have got rid of him at Bristol City, but like you say, injury problems, contract running out, those are scenarios. One. Those are <laughs> League One. We're, there's scenarios that we don't see behind behind the scenes. That could be the director of football. It's not really like Johnson walked in one day and might have went, right, see you later, go to Sunderland. It could just be the case of, you know, right, he wanted to come here, wanted to play football. That's fair enough. But uh, the, the big two I look at is Bobby Reid and Lloyd Kelly, who I believe went for a combined, combined 25 million and they're only bought for, for, for pennies. Lloyd Kelly came to the academy, which must give someone like Jack Diamond and Elliot Embleton real hope. And I know the fans really want to say, and Dan Neal and all these people, and Anthony Patterson, I'm sure they have a sub goalkeeper, or Levy, who's been playing a few games. I think Bentley's still got his number one shirt, but they had a two goalkeepers and they got rid of one and brought O'Leary up from the academy. Anthony Patterson must be ready to stake his claim, especially after Matthews. I'm not keen on Matthews, and he, he's a Parkinson player at the end of the day, and he must be sitting there worried as well. He must be worried about his place because everything, every time I've seen him, how old is, he's, he's been a fault for a goal. See what he went about Lee Burge. He's much more sturdier than than Matthews, and I actually don't. I actually like Burge. I think he's a good keeper for League One. However, Patterson must be ready to state his claim. Yeah, I mean, I I, I met um, I met Chris Coleman at, at a talk in, um, and he he said that Anthony Patterson was essentially good enough to come in when he was at the club, but he just didn't want to bring him in because of the way things were at, at the time, like. What, what what that could have done to his confidence if he'd made a mistake with, with how bad yeah. we were defensively. He didn't want to put that pressure on. I think he was 18 at the time. He just didn't want to put that pressure on him. Um, one final well, question. Strajek, Strajek as well, wasn't there? He's, he's in Scotland Strajek. now, isn't he? But he, went, but he was there at the time. Where everyone was begging to give him a chance because everyone said he couldn't do any worse. I think if he was good enough, he would have been brought in. But um, anyway, uh, one final question. Where are we going to finish this season? I've just said I'll snap everyone's hand off for a second. Uh, come on, we'll say first. We'll be positive. We've got behind the manager. I'm going to go first. For it. I'm going to go for it. Why not? Be positive, Dodgy, but positive. I'm going to put some positivity into the podcast. Positivity into the podcast. That, that's a, it's you, a fantastic motto. I think if you I'm want, going to I'll make that. The channel's trapped behind that. Positivity <laughs> in the podcast. <laughs> oh, God, anyway. you might struggle. If this doesn't go well, if this does not go well, if he doesn't win today, I'm going to look at an absolute tit on her. Oh, well, it's not the you know first what, like, time, it won't be the last. We're, we're going to get beat today, but is that really down to Lee Johnson? I mean, he, he no, only, no. I think, I, he, only, I just, I think he actually only put pen to paper either last night or this morning. I believe he did meet the first team players yesterday, but yeah. he's probably had no... I mean, to be honest with you, I think that probably be um, Andy he's Taylor, really, who's pulling the strings today and, and naming the squad, I would imagine. Is probably, Lee Johnson probably not going to have much involvement. Um, so I think if things don't go right today, I, I'm, I'm not expecting us to, but I wouldn't be surprised if we went uh, fought the back. Um, I think that, oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, we, if we kept it three at the back. Oh, um, I, think, and... I think I think he'll go four. I think he will go four after the, the positive change against Burton. And with all nine being out, I think it might just be easier to go to four at the back. But I'm, I could I'm, be wrong. I'm expecting us. I'm expecting us to in time. I just, I, I just can't see us. Um, I, I, I just can't. I just can't see us doing it today. But before we've had, before he's really had time to work. Not unless Andy Taylor's mm -hmm. been working on it since Tuesday. 
which he might have thought, well, I, I might have to take control Saturday and we're going to change it. Anyway, as a thanks for coming on. Um, been a, been a, a good chat. Uh, anyone in the comments as well, you know, feel free to, to, to drop your thoughts on uh, on Lee Johnson. Uh, hopefully we will we'll turn things around. Hopefully we'll win today. And, uh, hopefully this, this is the, the real start of our season and um, a bit of a renaissance. Uh, which, uh, please remember to like the video as well. Share it around if you can. I have made an Instagram page uh, dedicated to the channel just to stop us clogging it up on my personal account. Uh, Bruce and the videos. You what? <laughs> Bruce and 316 as well, if you want to follow well, me. Follow that one as well, if Get you want. shout out. Just photos of him holding pints, I believe. Um, <laughs> there, yeah, yeah, I've had five weeks off the drink, thank you very much. <laughs> it's, just, um, it's just about how my team's top of the league. Remember when we used to be top of the league, Dodzy? Wow, what a, what a moment. I've still got it, you know. I've still got it. Um, uh, yeah, the, the Instagram page is uh, just uh, the Red and White podcast, I believe. I think there's a link to it um, from my account. Uh, also, please remember to subscribe, trying to hit 150 by the end of that. would be absolutely class. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.